Hi everyone! Thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. If you're new here, my name is Sandy and on this channel we talk about all things interior design. So today's video is going to be how to make interior design mood boards without Photoshop. So I'm going to be using, showing you how to use it with completely free programs, Canva and another program that I will mention when we get to that and that will also be linked below. And make sure to stay till the end of this video because I will be discussing three different levels of mood boards and what purpose all of them serve and what kind of programs you would use to make those three different levels. So let's get into it. This mood board right here is the one I'm going to be showing you how to make. I actually did a vote on my Instagram a couple weeks ago to see which one you guys liked best and this one was the one that you all picked in comparison to the other one. So this one is the one I'm going to show you guys how to do. So to get started you would go to Canva and you'd create an account. I already have an account so this is what mine looks like and it's completely free. And as for when you go to create a design, you are going to see custom dimensions. I like for my paper to be landscape and not portrait. So make sure you're in inches here and do 11 by eight and a half instead of eight and a half by 11. Click create a design. And it's going to open up this new page for you that you can explore. I already have my mood board set in uh, one of my designs. So I'm just going to go back here where I've created a blank one underneath this, but we are going to show you how to make all these layers and make sure everything looks cohesive like this. So first I like to go in with the items that I know I'm working with, perhaps if you're doing it for your own living room. So I went to uploads and I actually got a new sofa. This is the new sofa that I ended up getting and I started with this, but you could get inspiration from anywhere if you are planning on changing out all your furniture or if you have furniture you want to keep I would recommend going to the websites like West Elm or Article or wherever you got your things from or find something that looks like it and we can and then you can start uploading them in here so if you did want to upload things the way you would do it is for example I would go to Article and let's click on this sofa right here so once we click on this sofa, it'll take us to a page that has like all white backgrounds. I really like using the article site for inspiration because most of these come in and they come in all these different, different angles, which is always really, really helpful. So no Photoshop needed to get different angles of things. And then you would just pick whichever side you wanted and you'd right click on the image and save it. Sometimes, you guys, it does not let you save it as a JPEG from when you click on it. So occasionally, you're going to have to try and click on it from here and save as. And it's not letting me do that either. How fun. So you also can click on the image and then take a screenshot of it. And that is usually my fail-safe way that always works when right clicking doesn't work. So we're going to save it or sometimes I'll let you copy. We're going to save just for the purposes of this video. So you're going to when you're back in here, you're going to click upload image. And then I had saved it in my YouTube folder. And I saved it under article sofa, so I'll find that and open that. And at the very top, it's going to load that in there. And you can just click on it and then there it'll be. So the thing with this is that this comes in with a white background, as you can see. So if I were to take it and drag it on top of here, it covers everything which we do not want because then you're not going to get this nice layering look. You can't layer everything on top of each other when everything has a white background. And we don't want to go into Photoshop because that'll take longer and also not everybody has Photoshop. So there are two ways to get rid of this background. What I'm going to do is delete this sofa that I drug in and I'm going to change this background color on here to just any kind of color so that way you guys can see if if and when you get rid of the background. 
So there are two options. I have a paid Canva account and what paid Canva allows you to do is to take this photo and go to effects up here and you can remove the background. It is genius. I love Canva so much and it, there it is. Voila, your background is completely gone and you can just start doing that for every single item and you're going to just drag them all in one by one and remove the background and start layering them like this. But if you do not have the paid Canva, here's how I used to do it before I got paid Canva. So there's a website called photoscissors.com. I'm going to link it down below. And what it allows you to do is upload an image. And I'm going to find that same sofa. And it uploads an image for you and you can easily remove backgrounds. It's pretty good at detecting the entire image. Super, super good at detecting the image. And then you can just save it. And if you don't have the paid version of it, you're just going to download it low resolution. But that's fine, especially if it's just digital and you're not printing it. If you are going to print it, you might want it to be high resolution. Um, and if and in that case, you might just want to go for the paid Canva. So I just say download in low resolution, which I don't mind. And I go back over to my mood board. And I drag this in from this bar down here. And as you see, when it loads up, it is, has no white background on it. And that is another way to get rid of the white background. So now that we're done with that and we know two different options for getting rid of the background, I'm just going to delete this sofa because that's not what we're using for today's design. And then I'm going to delete that background because we ended up using a different background for building this one. So what I did, because I had a sofa that I wanted to go in with, I added in the sofa that currently possess and I want to find something to go with it. It was a while ago when I used this so sorry about that I gotta scroll down a little bit longer. Here we go. So I found this one and this is the sofa that we have and I wanted to see kind of what wallpapers would go well with it. I picked wallpapers, curtains, lamps and I just went in and layered everything. So I'm just gonna probably be quiet for a little bit while you see me kind of layer everything in. So now that we have all of our major pieces in, we're going to think about layering and how that's going to look. So all of these are here and I could, you know, shrink them all down and just have them all separated from each other. But we don't want to do that because we want it to feel just a little bit realistic. So what I'm going to do is just be mindful of where things go. For example, a coffee table is going to go right here in front of the sofa and this lamp would go behind behind the sofa so I'm going to position that and send it backward until it goes behind the sofa and this would be in well in my living room anyways this is going to be near this item so they're going to be over here and then this art would go above the sofa so you're just kind of kind of play around and make sure things are on the mood board where they would be in real life I'd put these side tables next to here this plant would be in a basket realistically. So I'm going to drag it over here and then position it to go backward or actually to the front. Well, backward behind the um, backward behind the sofa, but then you're going to take the plant itself and you're going to position that backward. There you go. So that way it looks like the plant itself is in this basket over here. And then wherever the curtains go, I believe I have them over here in the previous design that's up here. Yes, I do. And then I made this look bigger. 
and the sofa is a bit bigger in that design as well. You're just going to want to play around making sure that the scale of things kind of fits where they would like really be. And you have all until you have all of your major pieces in. So I'm just going to play around a little bit more and make sure that everything is where it would need to be. So now that we have placed all of the really big items and everything is underneath what it should be, like the rug should be underneath the coffee table and the sofa and the side table and those things, where you're going to fill in the details because that's what makes something like this look really full. Because the difference between this one and this one here is all these little tchotchke kind of things that make it look like someone lives there and like someone thought about the details. So we're going to go in here and this is a media console so you would want to go in and find a TV and put a TV there. I have a TV over here. And I put a TV in here. And I have some trinkets that I found online that I'm going to fill in here. A good place to get these is going to be Amazon, especially if you're just starting. I would just type in like gold vase or something. And you can find all these all these items that already have like white backgrounds and that's really helpful so that you don't have to always um so that there's not so much to get rid of and it helps it be easier with the programs. So if I wanted to just click on this, make it bigger, and then file, save image as, and then save that, go over here to my mood board presentation, and then just drag this in. Scroll all the way to the top, because that's where your items come in. I could ditch that one for this and then go in here and remove the background and if you don't have that remember you can always use photo scissors so there's this and I could put it right here on top of this side table or I could put it on top of the coffee table if I wanted so now I'm just gonna speed through layering everything in and just trying to make it look full And there we go, that's our mood board for today. It looks a little bit different than this one. I actually think I'm really enjoying bringing in that warm leather pillow, that's so fun, and then changing the flowers. Just keep in mind for certain things that I did, for example, I didn't fill this up because it's slanted, so it's a little harder to fill up in Canva. That's something you probably could do in Photoshop because you could slant the items. But for instance, here, when I did one for my dining room, I filled up this bookcase because it was straight and easier to fill up. And, and mindful of things like this as well, where I had to move the TV up because the books and the vase were covering it. This is just really for show. You wouldn't put tall things like this in front of a TV because you would block it and you wouldn't be able to see them. So now that you guys know how to make this, let's get into the three different levels of mood boards and what you'd use them for. Yay! You made it till the end. Thanks for staying around, guys. So I really want to talk about three different levels of mood boards because I'm not sure that enough people are talking enough about this. They are very different and they serve different purposes. And one of the things I want to show you with mood board level one is what you would see something like this. This is a level one. You would see something like this on Pinterest, they're on Instagram a lot. Um, even designers use this as like concept boards and this is really just like a starting, it's a beginning, 
just getting your whole concept, seeing the vibe of how everything looks together. Uh, a good example of a designer who uses this would be Leah, Leah Alexander. So we're on her website and I'm going to show you guys her e-design tab. Shout out to Leah for giving away some free items for our giveaway that we did on our last video. And shout out to all of you who entered and won. Thank you so much for participating. So she has something like this where everything is separate of one another, which I really like. Oh my god, I'm going to keep fighting with it. If it doesn't just stay, please. <laughs> something like this where you there we go you can see all of the items kind of stand on their own and you get like a vibe of what they're all gonna look like together you get a vibe of what they're all gonna look like together and oh we had to go back into it and it lets all the pieces really stand by themselves and speak for themselves so I can really clearly see these curtains and this bookcase and this rug and everything. And then on the level number two of mood boards is what we just made. Something like this where everything is layered and it's a look and it's a bit more curated. Something like this you can actually fit more into because I can make all these pillows really small and these wine glasses and, and the flowers super small and they all kind of layer on top of each other. Whereas if I wanted to include every single pillow and every single form into this, everything would get super, super, super small to the point where it doesn't really stand out on its own. This is really, really great for seeing each piece on its own and this is great for seeing how each piece is going to lay on top of each other. And then when you want to get more advanced, the mood board level three is going to be, if we head back to Leah's website, something like this, where it has perspective and you can see inside the room and you can see flooring and you can see a ceiling and it looks like you're standing inside a room. So we're going to take one of her designs and go back over here. So mood board level three, and this is an office that she did. This is really pretty. I can see the wood floors. There's sun coming in through the window. It has like a view outside. In this light fixture, I can see that there is some kind of fan above. There, there's a door over here. All of this looks like I was just in a room. And she's taking attention to details. So there's these, uh, the bookcases are filled. And there's these shoes to make it look like someone was just there. And a little cart. That's cute to use a bar cart. And I think that might be a tea kettle or a globe or something. So this ultimately allows you to see how all the finishes are going to look in a space which is important to see how the paint colors are going to look and how the ceiling is going to look because sometimes spaces have these details like this one over here spaces have these details where you're able to see like the molding and all of these different little notches that are on the floor and here there's a there's a floor vent over here so you couldn't put a piece of furniture over here and just you're gonna want to note those things when you're really doing a real space whether it be yours or someone else's and this kind of perspective allows you to really get a really good feel of how it's all gonna look whereas this kind of on its own doesn't necessarily give you as much of a vibe as it could but this isn't this the third one takes a lot more time and is not always um, accessible in the time frame however long you're gonna you have to do this so I just want you guys to note that there are definitely three levels all are acceptable to go in a portfolio all I just as long as it all you know looks cohesive and together and like you put some thought into it those are all different ones so if you guys would like to see me make like level three or level one I can show you how I how to do those as well if you'd like another tutorial on it and I um, that's it yeah <laughs> that concludes this video this is my first voiceover I feel like I'm being awkward and I don't know how to end it uh, but yeah I hope you guys liked what we put together here today I hope you guys all have a great day and you learned something I would love 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 to see your um your mood boards that you make please if you could hashtag uh hashtag put a ring on it mood board i would love that because <laughs> i always say at the end of my videos i want you guys to put a ring on it beyonce said okay if you like it put a ring on it i say you know if you like it please subscribe